So you guys are responsible for the Klingons looking as awesome as they do in the new Discovery. What was your inspiration like? Where did you get the idea to change them so radically, but then kind of keep the texture of who they are? Well, you know, early on, because we were on the show for almost eight months before we actually went to camera, so this was a long discussion. Um, but uh, Brian Fuller and the other producers and writers, there was always this desire to, to create a new Klingon look because we felt like it was sort of something that had happened between TOS and Next Gen, happened with TOS and the films. And so it was a natural step to take in the Star Trek universe. So when you're coming up with a new show, that, that backed with the fact that this is really the first Trek where we're dealing with the problems that HD creates. And, and those problems, combined with sophisticated audience side, means you have to come up with something even more hyper real to make people believe it. So we wanted to do this with a keen eye on honoring the integrity of everything that, that's come before us. And we all love, I grew up on it and, and love the Westmore versions. And James worked on these versions. So we wanted to keep enough of it there that it resonated and, and felt like Klingon, but to take it as far as we could into the realm of realism and evolve the design to its, its next step. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's unanimous. I wanted to ask about Arium. Um, like, what are her augments, and does she have any special abilities? Oh, what can you tell us about her? I would love to tell you about that. And I, I think that's a Gretchen and Aaron question, actually. But um, you're right. She is an augment. And so um, that's a whole interesting world, isn't it, for all of us Trek? Is, is when, when you really get into Klingon in a different way they look, we know that because of Cold Station, that the augments... The reason for the TOS look and the lack of ridges is really because of augment technology and the technology that created Khan and, and, the, and the wars. So um, there, that's a, a space between that is really cool to play in. So we do this with a lot of our stuff, not just Arium or the Klingons, but like for the Klingon houses, for instance, one of the things I look forward to unpacking more as we move forward, I created a cultural axiom document for all the great houses. It doesn't mean it will be written into the show, but when we make the sign decisions and we show a house, and there's lots more to show, th there are all these cultural axioms I created to give us design impetus as to which planet in the Empire did they grow up on. So in the past, we've always sort of seen a homogenized look to the Klingon in their wardrobe and their hair, give or take. We're trying to make sure that all the houses feel like their own unique thing because why wouldn't they be if you look at the cultural patina of all of our cultures with our architecture our food our fashion or music on just one measly planet that's not even spacefaring yet what would the empire's cultures look like and we're really diving into that and will be as we go further so with her it's one of those things that i can't answer we have lots of reasons in our head but you should ask Gretchen and aaron that question but she is an augmented human okay it takes four hours for her makeup. That's what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and like, what about Detmer, the head of planes that she got after the battle? Is that something that's like, is that another Aaron question? Like, is that keeping her it, alive? What it purpose is, is that? And, and it, all, all th those things are really questions because I know more than I should, and I don't want to speak out of turn or they'll shoot me. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. But actually, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, do you guys get a brief that gives you that information that says, okay, this, this, and this, and then you kind of work to that? Yeah, that design. I can speak to. Okay. So um, when, when I said during the panel that it's, it's the most uh, immersive and, and generous and inclusive creative environment I've ever work, worked in, um, that is nothing short of the truth. So it, it is not common in our department to get this much immersion. It's Aaron and Gretchen and all the writers and producers from day one, we started working on the show almost eight months before we were physically on set. That's unique, even on a film today that's incredibly unique. And so, uh, yeah, they, they share ideas before they're even beat boarded, before their outlines, before their scripts. So, and, and then they ask for and actually mean it, which is a strange thing in Hollywood, your input. <laughs> and so, and so, so, so <laughs> they'll give us all, all kind of where they're headed and some thoughts that they're kicking around in, in writer room phase before it's even beaded out. And we'll start throwing stuff back at them. And so they'll kind of grab some stuff they like. And then that feedback starts to happen as Nev starts into the digital world. So that, that's a lot. Someday, I really hope all of you guys will get to see that. I think that, that there, there's an inexorably going to be a book 
um, if not a documentary. But Nev's design process is quite massive. So we work in the digital, not just because we're 3D printing things, just for everything. So there's digital designs that come from those conversations. Then we start taking that him and I will talk about it. He'll bang out versions. Then we'll start taking the ones that are most likely maybe doing some physical tests and looking at materials and colors. And um, for the Orions, for instance, we just looked at raw silicone samples. We, we took this demon face that is not part of Star Trek and ran different translucent blue colors to see what the base tone was that really gave it uh, an angelic, uh, almost, um, you, you, you know, uh, this heavenly glow so that when light goes through it and bounces back to your eye, it doesn't look like a dude in blue paint. James could speak to that. So the, the problem is we can do all those things in the lab and make all these cool new techniques work, but he's got to figure out how to get it to blend the skin. Right. Yeah, there's four, four colors. Four colors we have to spatter and spackle on there just to give life and depth to it. Just so it's not a solid blue, solid green, solid any color, any color character. Because that that 3D or that that 4K camera is going to pick up every detail. Like I said on the thing, it's great for NASCAR, but it's not great for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's great for us, but it's it's we actually have to work a, lo a lot harder. And also, uh, the prosthetics that I get now with that camera being so sharp, it's like Mary in particular having a five-piece prosthetic on. My goal is you not to see all those seams that I have. To Hide with stippling and coloring, and and is it, I mean, is it still a, um, kind of a process of discovery uh, as you go? Oh sure, day in day out. Is oh this, is oh this yeah. Or not? I mean, my my makeups change throughout the whole season <laughs> <laughs> in ways that I've I learn every day of a little way of doing it a little differently. Not not you guys will never see it. I see ways of shortening the time putting the paint a little bit to the right which will hide something and, and uh, it's, you know those are those changes that I'll, I'll see that make my job easier make production's uh, job easier because they get the actor on camera more time the less they're in my chair the more they're on screen but HD was just it's like technological landmine no one knocked on the doors of all the makeup effects people and went no Three years from now, you're going to have to change the way that you do everything because you're going to invent a new camera. And, and when he says HD is not good for us, it's it takes away all our secrets. Yeah. So it on shows like CSI New York and stuff, where we're doing all this high-end forensic stuff, which we also worked on together. Um, we had to literally throw away all of the molds to the pieces that were in foam because they just no longer work. The mid, there was day one of the season that we changed to, yeah. to a red camera and like yeah. that's it. We have to go all silicone with everything because you can see every edge, right? And so it, it takes away a lot of our tricks. So it is a process of discovery and then each character carries with it its own challenge. No matter how many makeups you've done, the next makeup is the first time you're doing that makeup. And so everything has to be figured out for, for that person and for the way their edges work. And so I know that you've been a Star Trek fan forever. What, what kind of aliens from previous iterations of Star Trek would you like to maybe see on Discovery? Is there anything you're dying to, to make? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Klingons would have been the first answer. Um, okay, and and we got the, out. right, we got the, um, uh, well, luckily got to do the Endorians and, and Tellerites, yeah. so awesome going back to TOS, but Borg, and I, and I think it's, just, am I answering yeah. for you, would it be Borg? It would, it's Borg, yeah. yeah we're it's dying, <laughs> because with 3D print, I mean, no single species is more better suited to the way that we're approaching uh, using technology now and, and immersing ourselves with 3D printing than the Borg. So we're just dying. I don't know when or if that would even happen in the series. That That is just our yeah. and I did, wish list. I yeah. did the uh, first contact, so oh. I got to do that that version of it, which now would, which was all foam latex. Now it's going to be now 3D printed with silicone. and Yeah, it's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, guys. Also, Thank the Tellarites. Awesome. They look amazing. So yeah. great. Thank you. Because yeah. yeah. that's a tall order if you go back to DOS. Yeah, no, I, saw you know, it. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Um, right? And, and yeah. there's there are some awesome versions in that. On, on Lee did. Ehrenberg. Was it an And I did one. I did one. Like, that's a cool way to have evolved the Tellarite. So, but they were kind of a, a more minor thing there for just a little bit. So we, we really went, let's go back. The honest answer to that is we went, let's go back to the original. Yeah. How can we try to get that thing, that feel, yeah. back into this, but not make it look 
like it did then, right? So I really looked at Stan Winston's work on, on the um, Island of Dr. Moreau, the, the now almost lost film Val Kilmer version, yeah. right? And uh, so, so many of those anthropomorphic forms, animal heads are so beautiful, and that is where we took our inspiration. We really studied the work they did in Moreau and we tried to take it. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks guys. Thank you so much.